Hey, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about how I got into medical school. Um, it was a really long journey for me and it, I'm a very non-traditional applicant. So a lot of my experiences look very different from uh, what people traditionally do um, as a pre-med. So if you want to know what my experience looked like and what everything that I did to get into medical school, just keep on watching. But before we get started, you know, make sure you subscribe and um, like this video so I know that I should do more videos like this in the future and um, join our little family here because I'm going to be talking more about medical school and all the things that go into getting in and how to do well when you're in it. I was always really studious in high school. I did the IB curriculum, so I took all IB courses. I was a straight A student and generally was just a very high strung stressed out kid like I really didn't know how to balance my time really well high school was really stressful for me and I just didn't know how to balance my time really well I was just constantly stressed out and I feel like there was like a whole lot of uh, emotional and well-roundedness kind of maturity that wasn't in me just yet um, so I did really well in high school and I ended up going to a top university one of the top universities and I feel like the the bad habits quote-unquote that I had in high school really carried over for me in college so I went into college actually as a Chinese major but I wasn't really sure what to do with a Chinese major so I took a lot of science courses as well and I killed myself my first semester for first two semesters. I took 19 credits of intense level Chinese as well as these pre-med, you know, general biology and chemistry courses and it was just too much and especially because I hadn't really reached that level of like discipline and maturity that you need to do well in something that, you know, and well in like a very high stressful environment. I genuinely really struggled with my first two years of college. So sophomore year of college rolls around and I hadn't done so hot my freshman year and I just honestly was feeling so drained and I didn't realize like what I was doing wrong and why I was so miserable and um, you know frankly taking 19 credits two semesters of my freshman year should have been a hint but it really wasn't. I was definitely one of those kids who was like I want to do everything and I, I know I can do it all and I can do it really well and yeah. So I really reevaluated my life starting sophomore year. I drop Chinese because I knew that I was a lot more interested in the sciences but I still didn't know what I wanted to do in the science field. I dropped Chinese um, my sophomore year but I still and I was taking these like upper level bio classes like genetics um, and, I, and I still wasn't doing that well you know I wasn't like I, and I wasn't feeling it I didn't know what my why was like why was I taking these courses what was my career trajectory looking like all these questions were so unanswered for me at that point that I just I don't know I, I was very confused and so end of sophomore year I decided to do an internship at a nonprofit which helps young adults with uh, quitting tobacco and that was really a game changer for me I felt so invested and I felt like I really could see a lot of the things that we were learning in class in real life um, you know I, I could look at addiction and I could look at like what people um, how like the disproportionate number of tobacco stores really affected how much people smoked and all that stuff and so I really really got passionate in the field of public health and and nonprofit work in general and then junior and senior year my grades also kind of got a bump because I feel like I learned more about the field itself and I learned more about myself and I learned how to study um, and I was just enjoying the subject matter a lot more and I was really building those good habits and discipline um, and good habits and skills that you need to do really well. Um, I still hadn't figured out whether medicine or becoming a doctor was like my ultimate passion and so when I graduated college, I decided to work in a biotechnology um, firm. It was a, a startup and I was a project manager and it was a really cool opportunity. I got to work with, so my, my company used to work with pharmaceutical companies, so you know, the companies that you hear right now like Pfizer, Moderna, um, GSK, uh, AstraZeneca, those were the companies I was working with and I would take these calls and I would lead these meetings and it was a very cool experience but I realized that I wasn't feeling very fulfilled at all. At the end of the day I was putting in so much work but I didn't feel like it was. I was getting as much back and it wasn't bottom line fulfilling or frankly after a year there that interesting anymore. At this point I had talked to a lot of people in the corporate world, I talked to a lot of doctors and I realized that 
I don't know why I was short selling myself and not pursuing medicine, which is actually what I wanted to do. I just told myself that I just wasn't good enough and I, that I couldn't operate at that level. Um, and I didn't know why I was telling myself that when clearly my work experiences had showed that I could you know, do really well and I could do really well under pressure and I, I could and I become so confident in my skills. So basically when I determined that I really wanted to pursue medicine, this was um, after I'd left my biotechnology job um, and biotechnology and pharmaceutical industry job, I really sat down and I thought about what it would take to be successful in this journey to medical school. And I did want to do things that weren't going to be effective in getting me where I wanted to go. Um, and I definitely didn't want to apply without being completely ready to apply. Like I didn't want to fail uh, in a cycle and then have to reapply again because I just was missing one thing or another. Like I felt like that a lot of people want to kind of rush into things and they want to apply as soon as possible and they want to get in as early as possible. But really the biggest tip that I can give anyone is that you really want to solidify your application. You want to have all of the pieces that medical schools are looking for before you apply. You know, you want to be as confident in yourself as an applicant as possible. So here were some of the things that I was thinking about as I was doing my research and here were things that I learned. So the first thing, obviously grades are one of the most important things when someone, when medical schools are reviewing your application. So your undergraduate GPA really, really matters. Um, and that was one of the reasons why I decided to pursue a post -bac program because I knew that in order to be a competitive applicant, I needed to show that I could handle the academic rigor for medical school. So undergraduate or post -bac GPA, very, very important. Um, the second thing that they look for is MCAT because MCAT not only shows that you can handle the academic rigor, but it helps compare you to basically everyone in the applicant pool um, and across universities. So the MCAT was also one of the things that I knew that I had to get into like that 90th percentile or over range in order to speak to my ability to handle academics. So that was a goal that I had set for myself. Um, so GPA, MCAT, and then the third thing really was creating a narrative and talking about my story. Um, I think what I've realized being in the application cycle is that schools really pick a lot of applicants based on fit. It's not even, you know, you could be um, 4.8515 MCAT score applicant, but if you are very research heavy and your entire application speaks heavily to research, a school that values service or, you know, community service or public health isn't really going to be uh, isn't going to think that you are the best fit for their school and so you might not be able to be as successful at that particular school. So I wanted to be very strategic too about the kind of story that I was telling, one, so that it stays true to who I was, but two, also helps me to make a stronger case for myself as an applicant to the schools that I wanted to go to. So the biggest things that I was thinking about at this point is how do I strengthen my, my GPA to the best of my abilities? How do I absolutely kill it on the MCAT? And then the last thing is, what is my story? What is my narrative? And what experiences can I pursue that will really build on the narrative that I already have going and that will really align with the passions that I've already expressed at this point? So at that point, I decided to study for the MCAT. I think I studied for about three and a half, four months, full time studying for the MCAT and I got a 90th percentile on the MCAT, which was mind blowing to me. But really those months studying for the MCAT truly changed me. I have never built discipline like that. I've never built such single minded focus um, and such an ability to kind of overcome a lot of my own limitations. Um, and then obviously learned how to take this like seven and a half hour standardized exam, which is honestly very hard. So if you guys want a video about how I studied for the MCAT, how I did well, um, how I, you know, my scores jumped um, and I started scoring in like the 90th percentile range. Let me know, just leave a comment below and I'm more than happy to do a video all about my study strategies, my skills and what my schedule looked like. But basically I did really well on the MCAT and then the last piece of my application at that point that was really missing was the grades aspect. And so I decided to pursue a post -bac program um, down in Richmond, Virginia and I killed it in the program too. I mean, I, I, I feel like I don't want any of this to come across as bragging. I just 
feel like I did really well, not because of like any kind of intrinsic things, but because I put in good practices and habits and really matured as a person, which allowed me to do really well. Um, and so once the post -back program was done and I had done really well in it, I, I got a 4.0, I applied to medical school and I applied basically the first day that I could apply. Like as soon as AMCAS opened, I applied. Um, and again, if you guys want to know how to write a personal statement or how I wrote my essays, how I constructed a narrative and a story around my application, drop a comment below. And I'm again, more than happy to do an entire video because that definitely deserves an entire video because I have so much to say. Uh, but long story short, I applied in May, like end of May, around May 28th. And in November, I got into my dream medical school. Uh, so I'm going to be attending medical school at Georgetown University in Washington, DC, which is also my alma mater. So it's extra special for me. Uh, and I could not be more excited. I know my um, work experiences and trajectory, like I mentioned, does not look very traditional, right? It looks very different than I think what a lot of people have done. I worked in a ton of different organizations and biotechnology and pharmaceuticals. It, it just doesn't look like a traditional pre-meds journey, but I feel like that's why it was so important for me to share my story with you, um, just so that you know that you don't always have to do things like everyone else does uh, in order to get to where you wanna go. Um, but I've talked a lot and um, that's all I gotta say, but thank you for joining me today. Thank you for listening to my story. If there's anything else that you want me to cover, uh, just let me know in the comments below. I'm more than happy to cover it uh, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.